Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello there. Uh, what is the date today? It's the 17th? 17th? Yeah. December 17th. Uh, which means that later today, we're going to be doing some Dungeon World. I've got a Dungeon World one-shot, and I get to play, and I talked about it a few days ago. I'm pretty excited. We did character creation, and I'm playing a halfling druid, and I'm going to turn into a reindeer, and i got to figure out the three things that reindeer do, play games, make fun of Rudolph, dashing, dancing, prancing. I don't know. I'll figure it out. we got this Christmas-themed one-shot coming up. Uh, if you're watching this the day it released, that'll be later on today. Uh, but for me, it's yesterday. For you so it's sunday and i just finished trailer time so if you don't watch my twitch channel or you don't tune in on the random weekend of the month that i do trailer time you might have no idea what i'm talking about so trailer time is a live stream only twitch thing that i do mostly because of copyright where i'll start in the morning we'll hang out we'll watch trailers We'll get sidetracked, we'll watch other trailers, we'll talk about movies and TV shows, and normally it's like two or three hours long, but today uh, we did five hours, and that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of trailers. So I've been thinking about movies. Um, you know, there, there tend to be themes that develop, so we'll watch, we'll watch whatever trailers are available, and then I'll kind of spiral out. Like, we watched the new Avengers trailer, which I'm so-so on, and then I noticed in it that Thor was dressed like Eminem from 8 Mile. So we went and watched the 8 Mile trailer. And then I noticed that Brittany Murphy was in that. And I was like, man, Brittany Murphy, what else has she been in? So then we went from 8 Mile to Clueless. And they were watching Clueless. And I think, I want to say Julia Stiles is in Clueless. And then we watched 10 Things I Hate About You. And then we started talking about 90s movies. And it just, this is how it goes. And this is why we can spend five hours talking about movie trailers. That, and the fact that I love movies. Going to the movies, buying a ticket, getting your popcorn, sitting in the theater around all those other people, the hush that happens, the lights that go down, and like, there's just this magic. And there's nothing else in the world for me that feels like that. There's this engagement that you get, at least I do, when I'm sitting in a movie theater where I can feel the presence of everyone around me. It's like a shared experience, but nobody is talking to each other, really. You're not engaging with people. You just get their reactions along with yours. You all laugh together or gasp when something scary happens. And that, for me, is such a nice social experience. I love it. I like being able to be a part of something social without directly engaging other people. Uh, I think that that's kind of cool. And like a neat thing that you don't really experience in any other way. And that's always been the case. I've always loved movies. When I was a kid, uh, I remember going to the movies a lot with my friends, with my family. I'm trying to think about the first movie I remember going to. Probably some kids movie, probably some Disney movie. But the first, the first movie I really, really remember seeing in the theater was probably Jurassic Park. Or maybe Casper. You remember that movie? Casper? I remember Casper because we went to see it on a day that I had really bad allergies. I was like sneezing a lot and my eyes were watering. We had tickets for this movie and I really wanted to go. I was like, no, we have to go. We have to go. I want to see it. And I remember sitting in the theater with my eyes all like blurry and just being like, yeah, the movies. I love it. <laughs> and all through my teen years, I remember when um, episode one came out. Star Wars, the prequel, the first one, there hadn't been a new Star Wars movie in like my lifetime. I saw it like 11 times and it's so bad. And I don't know if I just was excited about the, the cinematic experience of a new Star Wars or if I thought it wasn't bad, but I just remember going over and over and over. Same with Lord of the Rings. I saw Fellowship of the Rings five or six times in the theater. Maybe I didn't see Star Wars that many times because the most I've ever seen a single movie in the theater is Blade Runner, and that was only eight times. But I remember seeing it a lot. Listen, seeing episode one once is a lot of episode one. As a teen, I was really excited about the idea of going to movies, and then I remember when I was in high school one year, the school hired a new teacher whose job it was to teach video production. They had cameras and tripods, and we got a bunch of equipment, and all of a sudden my high school had this course where you could learn to make movies. I made a bunch of movies in this class. I learned how to, this is how I know how to wrap a cable properly and how to collapse a tripod without breaking it. I know these things from this, this teacher and from these classes as a kid. And we made, 
we made like weird horror movies. I made a stop motion movie about Pac-Man. Um, they were all god, like god awful and I wish I had them so I could show them to you. But yeah, just a lot of terrible movies. And because we had access to the equipment, uh, we would like co-produce or direct projects for other kids. So like if somebody wanted to do a uh, an English school project, an English project about um, like a book they had read or something, me and my friends would be like, hey, we'll we'll direct and produce that for you. You write it, you do the content, you be in it, but we'll like borrow the equipment and we'll borrow the tape and we'll like we'll make it happen for you. And we did this uh, a bunch in uh, in middle school and in, in early high school. And it's incredibly dorky. It's right up there with being uh, a member of the BBS club, which I was proudly, thank you. It was a passion for the idea of telling stories in a visual way. And in a way, I think, you know, back then, and maybe this is your experience too, but as a teenager, every time you show interest in pretty much anything, there's gonna be an adult who's like, well, you know, this could be your job. You could, you could do this for work. This could be your job. Now they never said that about Dungeons and Dragons, but the adults around me were all like, oh, you could, you could do this. You like video production. You could, you could move to Vancouver. You could, you could get a job as a key grip, which obviously I never did. Uh, I kind of fell out of, I fell out of interest with, with video for a while, but that deep seated feeling of loving the movies never went away. Um, I remember seeing Monty Python and the Holy Grail in theater the first year that I moved to Calgary. Uh, which is where I moved after I, I lived in Kelowna, and just being so overjoyed to experience a movie that I had giggled over with my friends on VHS so many times, but in the theater. Because that, for me, is really where it's at. Like, I like watching movies, you know, hanging out in your room, watching them on your laptop, or watching them with friends in your living room, but for me, it's about going to the movies. It's about separating that experience from your regular life. That's what gives it that magic. Now, obviously, filmmaking isn't really the field I went into, which is sort of funny to be saying this to a camera with the intention of publishing this little self-interview on the internet. I'm, I'm making a short film about how I never went into making films, but, you know, I never, I never followed it up, but I, I continue to love movies, and movies have deeply, deeply impacted the way that I see the world and the way that I tell stories. One of the first things that people started to give me feedback on when we started doing Swan Song and when I first got into role-playing games is the cinematic way that I game master. So when I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons or other role-playing games, nine times out of 10, when I want to establish a mood, I will describe things like establishing the shot. I'll describe lens flare. I'll describe the swelling of the strings in the soundtrack, right? I'll say, we get a panning shot of the surface of the planet. I'll do scenes where the players aren't even there. I'll say, on board the enemy spaceship, we see the captain striding back and forth angrily, responding to what you just did when you destroyed their base. Right? Like for me, storytelling and the idea of imparting an image into someone's mind, which is what we're doing when we play role-playing games, right? Like when I say, you enter the room, a dense fog hangs on the floor at ankle level. A cold breeze blows through the room, tousling your cloak. You're envisioning that space. I have in my mind an image of a room and your character entering that room. What I want to do is impart as closely as I can the image in my mind to your mind, my thoughts to your thoughts. And I want to impel you to imagine what I'm imagining. I want us to join each other in that space. And for me, the language of film is how I do that. And it's really fun describing it as if we were making a TV show together or making a movie together. You can go back and you can watch Nebula Jazz particularly, but any show that I do, but Nebula Jazz especially, and I will wear my influences on my sleeve. I, I'm just paying homage to every beautiful movie I have ever seen picking bits and pieces. And I, I've talked about this as a creative process, the idea of stealing creatively, repurposing and understanding the things that you love so that you can use them to make your art better. So for me, that's, that's all movie. It's movies are the language through which I understand stories best. And there's something really special about getting to sit down and like talk about that with people. So we did trailer time today, which is my monthly exercise in what movies I love, and to remind me of all the movies that I've seen and movies that I, I'm excited about seeing in the future. Because there's so many. Like, 
I think the best thing that a person can do is be broadly interested in media, right? Read all sorts of books, listen to all kinds of music, but for me, most importantly, watch all kinds of films. If I had only ever watched Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and James Bond movies, if I had only ever engaged in fantasy and sci-fi, I would never have been able to get access to some really amazing stuff. I've been thinking a lot about Yasujiro Ozu. Ozu is a Japanese film director who haunts me. I, uh, I watched his movie uh, Tokyo Story for the first time a few years ago at a theater here uh, in Vancouver, the Pacific Cinematheque. And ever since then, I go back in my mind to the way that he creates narrative from nothing. If you haven't seen it, Tokyo Story is a movie in which very little occurs. The camera doesn't move much. The scenes don't shift quickly. It has this glacier-like pacing almost like a Tarkovsky film, but slower. And I keep going back to it in my head, this stillness of, of Ozu's work. I just, it's, it's, I'm shaken by it. And I love that experience. I love thinking about my favorite movies and going back and, and seeing them through a new lens. And I think as you, to risk sounding like an old man, as you get older, as you get older in this, this life, you realize that, Art doesn't change, but our context for it does. And I think that's so vastly important and so interesting and personal. And it's why I like to go back and watch and talk about movies that I haven't in years because I'm a different person now. And so I'm constantly just trying to both take on new media, take on new experiences, watch new movies, but also returning to those things that I, I loved or even hated as a, as a kid or as a teenager or in my 20s because that's kind of the miracle of being a, a person is you get to experience things over and over. So yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm feeling a little philosophical today and I, I've just been thinking about that stuff. Movies, they're very important and I think that they've made me a better and hopefully more interesting person. I kind of wanted to talk about like, here are my five favorite movies, but I there's just too damn many of them. I don't know. You tell me, what movies should I watch? What's your favorite movie? Why? What's a movie that you've gone back to a dozen times and every time has been different? Because just like music, I, I want to know. I want more. Well, we're going to draw the curtain. We're going to fade out. Fade in the end title credits on uh, on this one. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. This is uh, Vlogmas Day 17. Uh, and I hope you'll join me later today for the Dungeon World one-shot, uh, A Christmas with Cox. Uh, that's going to be over at It Me JP. As usual, it's a roleplay one-shot. Uh, and then we'll be uh, we'll be carrying on with vlogs for the rest of the week. So if you have something, and, and this has been actually really good for me, if you have something that you're interested in me talking about, something that like normally I might not because, you know, I'm not streaming, we're not talking about video games or role-playing games, though I'm certainly open to those topics. But if you have something you want to hear me talk about or that you're interested in, let me know because I, I like it. I like being able to engage in these little ways. Um, so I don't know, maybe you've heard me hint at uh, a, a mechanic in a role-playing game that I, uh, I haven't had time to talk about. Or maybe I've talked about some uh, some piece of media that I've enjoyed. Let me know. Let me know this these topics. I'm I'm completely open to to ideas, and you're giving me a bunch of inspiration for these vlogs. We got another fourteen days, thirteen days to go. Another two weeks, basically. Uh, so I'm always looking for more stuff. And uh, I know I promised you a vlog about my cameras, but I gotta find a day where I have like several hours to film it. So stay tuned for that. We'll keep that going. Thanks for coming as always. And we will see you tomorrow.